In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to one of my favorite YouTubers, Jacob Effing Jones. Now, you guys may have seen his content before. He's a younger guy that makes content reviewing cigarettes and reviewing vape products. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take a first hit. This is my first hit ever of a vape, ever. So uh, let's go ahead and get this hit. Let's see. He's extremely genuine, extremely wholesome, and I can guarantee you this dude is working his butt off on YouTube. We started around the same subscriber count when we really started to put the pedal to the metal on our channels, and he is just absolutely crushing me right now, and he is absolutely crushing it on YouTube and making content. Anyways, I want to react to his video today, what nicotine addiction feels like, so let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be trying to explain what nicotine addiction feels like. It's something to me that is very, very hard to put in words, and today I'm going to be trying to attempt to, I'm going to be trying to attempt to put nicotine addiction into words, and let me know guys, let me know if guys, if you think I hit it on the nail, let me know if you guys think it was just a complete miss. How can you not love how genuine this guy is? Let me know how it went. Let me know if it was a complete miss. I'm going to try to. What a humbling dude. But today, I'm going to be smoking a little bit of a basic Red 100 cigarette. And, well, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I think nicotine addiction feels like as a whole. I think without further ado, though, let's go ahead and get one of these cigarettes out. Let's go ahead and get it lit up. And let's go ahead and start talking about it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you've been addicted to nicotine before, you know the feeling of I can't start doing this until I have a cigarette, until I hit my vape. I can't sit down and do my schoolwork unless I have a dip of tobacco in my mouth, unless I have my vape. A lot of times this is very common with addiction where we see a person unable to do something unless they have nicotine first. And granted, as a disclaimer, I know the premise of this guy's channel is smoking a cigarette and talking. So I, I understand that. I understand that. As said, though, to me, nicotine addiction is something that is very, very hard to put in words. It's something that you can't really explain. But I was hanging out with friends the other night, and we were just talking about nicotine addiction because one of my friend's dads, he was smoking for like 20 years kind of thing, and he finally quit. A lot of people, when they quit, it's, it's somewhere in their 30s to 40s. If they don't quit at that point, it's usually, again, in their 60s that they'll try. And the reason for that is, is because it, on average, takes about 10 to 20 years to start to really feel the physical negative effects of nicotine addiction. I'll, you know, I remember when I was smoking, I was younger, I felt good back when I was probably closer to Jacob's age. I'm 32 now, and I didn't feel any of those really too harmful effects. Yeah, it, my breathing was a little off, my gums would bleed from chewing tobacco, but it was nothing major. It was not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, do you get what I'm saying? It wasn't anything major. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was, it was no big deal. It was no big deal. He's always advised my friend not to smoke. And my, this, my friend does not smoke kind of thing. And they were, they were kind of like, so what does nicotine addiction feel like? Why is it so hard to quit? And to me, nicotine addiction, just simply put, feels like relief kind of thing. Without knowing it. <sighs> Jacob just hit the nail on the head when he referred to nicotine addiction as feeling like relief. And I'm going to quote Alan Carr. The relief that the relief that he's about to describe is the same relief that a person would get if you were wearing a really, really tight pair of shoes. So say you put on a shoe and you tied it super, super tight until it was like suffocating your foot. When you take that shoe off, you'll feel a sense of relief or it's like wearing super, super tight pants on purpose just to take off those pants and then feel a sense of relief. It's like bashing your head up against a wall just to stop bashing your head to say, oh, now I suddenly feel better. That's the type of relief that he's about to describe to you in a different type of terms. Every time you have a cigarette, every time you have a cigarette, it's just building up kind of thing and then when you light it and you take that first hit it's relief kind of thing you finally feel 100% you finally feel like you kind of thing and that is really what it's like the reason what, what he's talking about what's actually building up that anxiety and that stress of wanting to hit your vape again wanting to have another cigarette again is actually the anxiety and stress that's developing because your body's starting to 
enter a state of nicotine withdrawal symptoms. So this would be like putting on a tight shoe and then just tying it tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. Remember, when you're addicted to nicotine, every 30 to 60 minutes, your body's going to enter a state of nicotine withdrawal. This is why nicotine withdrawal is so exhausting because your body's constantly going through a state of detox and it's constantly going in and out of a withdrawal state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's really what it's like to me. It's just like every time I finish a cigarette and I'm just kind of sitting there and I'm just kind of sitting there and I'm smoking the cigarette and I'm done kind of thing. I finish the cigarette and it's over with and I, I, I'm just done kind of thing. And then <laughs> Jacob, I know exactly what you're saying, man. And honestly, I don't even know if you realize the genius behind what you're saying right now. The international best-selling book on quitting smoking, quitting vaping is literally based on what you're saying, man. Only a few years earlier, and you could have been a multimillionaire based off of this. I wait to smoke another cigarette, and I just feel less and less and less like myself. Like puzzle pieces are falling out of me kind of thing. Like the puzzle of myself, the puzzle of me is kind of falling apart, and I'm kind of more and more out of it, and I'm kind of getting a little bit cranky, and I just don't feel like myself kind of thing. It's But then when I decide, finally, to have another cigarette, I feel relieved. I feel like myself again, and I feel whole. I feel like how I, I feel like the best I've ever felt. This is where uh, Jacob is describing nicotine withdrawal symptoms. So that piece of feeling like something is missing and then you're feeling out of it, you're not feeling whole, you're not feeling like yourself, that's because your body's entering a state of nicotine withdrawal. And what that addictive voice in your brain is telling you to do is, hey, go have that next cigarette, go hit that next vape hit. Because then it's going to calm down those withdrawal symptoms and it's going to give the apparent feeling of relief. And I actually think this is extremely dangerous and one of the hardest things about quitting. But I know for me, as long as I had, and the Von said this, the Von's channel on YouTube, he said this flawlessly, as long as I had nicotine addiction, as long as I had that problem, and I knew I had a solution to it just using more nicotine, I was able to kind of brush off other problems in my life, and that made quitting really scary because it was like, crap, if I don't have nicotine addiction as an excuse anymore, if I don't have that problem anymore that I constantly have to attend to, now I might have to go face some other things in my life. Not saying that that applies to Jacob's situation. As far as I can tell, this is a pretty happy dude. And that is really one of my explanations of cigarette addiction, and that to me is one of the reasons why cigarette addiction is so scary. This, it's really funny because the thing that's making him feel deprived and feel like he's been separated into a million different puzzle pieces is the very same thing that he's saying makes him feel whole. And this is the trap of nicotine addiction. And a lot of this information, guys, based on Alan Carr's book, The Easy Way to Quit, I put it in the video description below. But it's funny. How can the very thing that's tearing you apart make you also feel whole at the same time? It's impossible. But this is what happens when we develop an addiction. Things start to not make sense. We start to contradict ourselves. Because it's the relief behind it kind of thing. A any other addiction that I've ever come across with kind of thing. Um, addiction to like, let's say, uh, just for example, let's say uh, I was addicted to, uh, to uh, a little bit of herb kind of thing, a little bit of that Delta 9 kind of thing, a little bit of that stuff. Let's say I was addicted to that. It's more of just a daily routine kind of thing. It's more of just a daily routine. You, you, you wake up, you smoke kind of thing. It's a daily routine. It's not physically addictive. It's a mental addiction. I just want to pause and I get what he's saying. He's, he's, um, when it comes to THC addiction, guys, you can get addicted to Delta 9 very physically. Remember, your body has an endocannabinoid system. You have cannabinoid receptors in your body, just like you have nicotine receptors in your body. And when you become uh, physically dependent upon uh, Delta 9 to sleep, to eat, 
it regulates your digestive system, it regulates your mood. When you remove that, you will go through, or some people will go through, very physical withdrawals. Obviously, it doesn't sound like it was the case for him, which everyone's different. So I'm not saying he's wrong because that was his experience with it. He did fine with it. You know what I'm saying? But for some people, it might be a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because it can be physically addictive, if you know what I'm saying. Cigarettes are a physical addiction. You will get cranky. You will feel a stomach ache kind of thing. You will feel hungry if you don't have a cigarette. You will have a headache. Okay, so what he was just talking about there when it comes to nicotine withdrawal is accurate. You are going to feel fairly minor withdrawal symptoms, but I want to emphasize something. One of the main reasons why people struggle with nicotine addiction so much and the withdrawal symptoms is because mentally, they're holding on to the fact that they're giving something up, that they're making a sacrifice. And that creates a lot of stress. If I think I'm giving something up that I truly enjoy doing, I'm going to become miserable. I'm going to become cranky. I'm going to become angry because I'm experiencing a state of self-deprivation. And if you change your mindset to quitting and you see that you're not actually giving up anything, that it's all about what you're gaining back, a lot of those physical withdrawal symptoms, you won't even notice. Physically, psychologically stressing yourself out over something can create a lot of physical stress, and that's what happens to a lot of people in this situation. I love that right there. He takes the freeze frame for the uh, for the thumbnail. The dude is a YouTube genius. I'm telling you, keep an eye on him. Please, in the comments down below, explain what you guys think a nicotine addiction feels like. As I love it how he engages his viewers and how he's asking for comments. This is a dude that truly cares about his YouTube subscribers. Awesome. Said to me, it's like relief. It's like you have puzzle pieces falling out of you and. I know that might be a little bit confusing if you guys don't smoke. I know the majority of you guys probably do smoke. But to me, it's just one of those things where I'm just kind of sitting here and I'm just kind of like, man, I really do not feel like me until I have a cigarette. And a cigarette addiction to me is so hard to quit because of that, because you don't feel like yourself until you have that. And it's that fear of not feeling whole if you don't have a cigarette kind of thing. And, and that's just a mental block kind of thing. That's a mental block. You know you're going to eventually feel like yourself when you don't have a cigarette. Honestly, 98, 99% of quitting, smoking, vaping, nicotine is mental. It's very, 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 very little of it has to do with the physical aspects. But for those three days I quit, and I made a video a while back, quitting cigarettes for three days because I got my wisdom teeth out. For those three days, I can genuinely say I did not feel like myself at all kind of thing. I did not feel like myself at all. I did not feel whole until I had a cigarette. And it's so scary that even three days after, it holds on to that. And those three days were some of the longest three days I've ever had. Let me tell you what, y'all. I gotta be completely honest with y'all. I mean, like, it was not easy. It was not easy. It was easier than I expected, I said in that video. But it was certainly not easy. And I, I didn't feel like myself until I recorded that video, smoking my first cigarette in three days. And it was just... Uh, nicotine withdrawal typically peaks in the first three to five days. And there's something very important that he said. He quit because he was getting his wisdom teeth taken out. He was in a situation where he was forced to quit. So I would expect someone in that situation is going to have quite a bit of pain and suffering while they're quitting as compared to the person who makes the decision to quit on their own terms, on their own time. Uh, quitting for a forced reason typically is always a struggle for the person. I know I experienced that a million times over and over again. A very scary and a very, uh, I would say, eye-opening experience because nicotine addiction really is scary. To me, at least. Maybe this is just coming off. Don't. Uh, maybe I'm just coming off like a pansy right now, but maybe that's just me. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, cigarette addiction to me is, and I'm sorry, this is a little bit more of a serious video. I, I typically, I like to joke around in my videos and all that, but this is a little bit more of a serious video. And it's just something that is very, I would have to say, scary. What he's talking about, nicotine addiction being scary, is very interesting because it's fear that keeps people addicted. Uh, there's a fear of, will I ever feel whole again if I quit? Will my life ever feel good again if I quit? But then on the same side of that, there's the fear of what's going to happen to me if I keep smoking? What's going to happen to me if I keep vaping? So it's it's actually fear, this scariness that he's talking about, that keeps people 
addicted. Now, we know the reality of that conversation is if you quit, you're going to be healthier, you're going to have more money in your bank account, things will go fine, ultimately. If you keep going, you're rolling the dice. We, we, we don't know the outcome, although for most people with cigarette addiction, the outcome doesn't look great. Because uh, before I started smoking cigarettes, I was never really told of what a cigarette addiction felt like, that I would not feel whole, that I would not feel like me if I didn't have a cigarette, that you are, I, I, I'm like, it, it, there's so many of these like boomer cartoons kind of things, so many of these cartoons that it's like ball and chain, put on a smoker or whatever. And those, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, they're not like the most accurate thing in the world, but it's more accurate than I would have thought. I feel like if I had had a more accurate explanation of what addiction felt like, maybe I wouldn't have actually smoked. He hit the nail on the head with that comment. We've done such a poor job of actually explaining addiction to people and, and the real consequences of it. We spend so much time talking about the health consequences, but you know, growing up, we'll look around and we'll see adults doing it. We'll see our friends doing it, not, not suffering those immediate health consequences. And then to us, we, we then think there must be some benefit. There must be some advantage to smoking, to using nicotine. And this is where all these anti-smoking, anti-vaping commercials fall short. They fail to dispel that myth. Maybe that's just me, but it's just a scary thing. I said though, a, a nicotine addiction just to me feels like you don't, you, you don't feel like you until you have a cigarette. And you don't feel whole until you have a cigarette. You don't feel like, when, when you have a cigarette, it's just that, that feeling of relief, you know what I'm saying? It's that feeling of relief that you're having that cigarette and you're able to enjoy it. And cigarette addiction, don't get me wrong, I love cigarette addiction. It's, and that could just be the addiction talking, don't get me wrong. I gotta be completely honest with y'all, it is probably, it is probably just the addiction talking right there. I love this. He just stops himself and admits, yeah, no, that's the addiction talking. Because I used to say that all the time too. But then you got to remind yourself, yeah, you might like cigarette addiction, but you don't like the health consequences. You probably don't like the money you're spending on it. You probably don't like the amount of time and effort that you're putting into getting that next cigarette. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot. You got to remind yourself when you have an addiction of all the things that you don't actually like and then remind yourself of all the things in life that you actually love that addiction one day stands to take away from you. Addiction is very conniving and he called it out right there. It's also, Jacob's in an interestingly dangerous spot because he's calling out all the very things that make addiction addiction. He's he's doing a great job of that. And yet he continues. And I, I've been there before. And I think that's a little scary. I do think that makes it particularly hard to quit. When you see it for what it is, and then you you disregard it. You disregard those facts. I think that becomes scary. It's still one of those things. It's still one of those things that is just enormously like, oh man, what was I talking about? I completely lost my train of thought. Y'all know what I'm saying? Cigarette addiction is scary. Let me just put it that way. Um, and it's definitely one of those things that I wish was better explained in media and I wish was better explained to people as a whole because it's something that is, it's quite serious kind of thing. And cigarette addiction is a very scary thing. And to me, it's a, a very serious thing. The scariest thing for me about Jacob and nicotine addiction is I love watching this guy's YouTube channel. And the scariest thing to me is he loves making YouTube videos. He's clearly very passionate about it. He clearly cares about his audience. If he got sick from smoking or some smoking related illness, addiction, smoking will have had taken this all away from him. Now it's ironic because his channel's built on smoking, but really it's not. It's built on his personality, if you know what I'm saying, if you get what I mean. I would watch this guy talk about paint drying on a wall because of his wholesomeness and gen, gen, genuineness and all of that. So I, I hope he knows that for the day when he does decide to quit because his YouTube is going to put another barrier into that for him. I, mean, I love cigarette addiction. I love smoking cigarettes. I love the relaxation behind it. I love the stress relief behind it. I love feeling like myself kind of thing. You there is no stress relief from smoking cigarettes. The only stress it relieves is the withdrawals that are setting in from your last cigarette. The relaxation and the feeling like yourself again, has, that's always been there. It's the cigarette that makes you not feel like yourself, um, right? The solution can't be the problem. And that's the case with smoking. The problem smoking, it creates the problem, but then it also comes through as the solution. The only true solution to this conundrum is quitting. 
And going through day-to-day life not feeling like yourself is absolutely exhausting. It's exhausting, this process that he's going through with active addiction. And this is why so many people want to quit. I cannot complain personally. I've been loving talking to y'all right now because this is just one of the most interesting topics in the world to me. I love talking about addiction. I love talking about the psychology behind it and what addiction really is kind of thing. All right, Jacob just goes on to say, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys enjoy your day. He's just a good dude. Check out all the information in the video description below, guys, for tips on quitting and more things about Jacob Jones because I know this guy's grinding on here. He's putting in the work, and even though he's in a completely different field than I'm in and entertainment style, I still support anyone who's working hard. So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know what I'm saying? And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram and my book in the description below. Highly recommend you guys check all those out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. And to the next one, stay safe and peace. And have a great day. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys, as I said, enjoyed the video. Check out my Instagram, my merch, my, uh, my book in the description down below. You know what I'm saying? And to the next one, guys, stay safe and peace. And have a great one. You know what I'm saying? Stay safe out there, y'all.